Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. We join in Him 835.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us in instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is written in the book of Genesis, the 45th chapter, a reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the, families has, for the fam, famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you, for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord to all the house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years to fam famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. 
and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 27, 37, will be spoken responsively. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the grass they move away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, whom shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light, and the justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The second reading is written in 1 Corinthians, a reading from 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. But, is not the, but it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust, as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. 
If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. At this point, if there is faith builders, I would invite you to make your fun exit now. There we go. Dancing back. I wish I had that energy. All right. Now, here's a lesson, isn't it? Love your enemies. <clears throat> Do good to those who hate you. We've heard those words before. But, but Jesus, if you could just understand how I've been hurt, you wouldn't say that to me. Right? It's a little different. I get the words, and, and, but that's, that's a tough one, right? <clears throat> and have any of us heard those words and wanted to say, yeah, but Jesus, that doesn't apply to how I got hurt. Right? It's tough. This, this series of things that Jesus goes through here. <clears throat> Boy, my throat's not clearing this morning. I apologize. This first lesson we got, that's how we're going to start this. This first lesson is in, and uh, you know, I'll pull out the Broadway piece, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. Hey, right? ring a bell? Yes, Joseph and the Coat of Many Colors. <laughs> but um, is, is what maybe you heard about it in Sunday school. Right? And it is a long story. What we have is just a little snippet. And, and but so let me give you the really, really cliff note version. Really, really. Right? His brothers were very, very jealous of Joseph. Because <laughs> he had a coat of all kinds of colors. And that was real hard to do in those days. Right? So they decide they're gonna kill him. They changed their mind when they're pretty much digging his grave in the desert. But um, when, when a crew comes by and they feel that they can get some money for him, and so they sell him off as a slave into Egypt. And as far as they're concerned, done with the problem. 
Now, in the meantime, Joseph does pretty well with the Pharaoh, gets a real good job <laughs> um, with, with the Pharaoh. We'll, we'll just... And, and in the meantime, he foresaw the famine coming up, and so he st stockpiled food. A lot of it. Egypt was in good shape because of what Joseph had done. In the meantime, what used to be very rich family that Joseph was from, they were in famine. They were hurting. And the only way to survive was to go beg into Egypt. And then this is when this comes. And so his brothers come up to Pharaoh and they're going to talk to the guy in charge of the food and out walks their brother. Imagine. And there he is. And now there they are recognizing each other. One might wonder if we were Joseph, if our reaction would be a bit different. Joseph chose to forgive. Right. Joseph chose to forgive and restore the family in doing so. Powerful, right? Powerful stuff. The thing, the thing about forgiveness is, is we've all heard it's, you know, we forgive not because the other person, right? It's because we need to do it. And, and, but, but we... This, this, the, the pain of being stabbed in the back, the pain of being really, truly hurt is the thing that, that tends to rest with us. And, and the problem is, when that rests with us, we don't have anything else but that, but that pain. And then we choose to hang on to that. Almost... I, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> Almost like a badge of honor. I've been hurt. It wasn't fair. And those things are true. But the thing is, it doesn't have to stay that way. One of the things about, about forgiveness, it is an incredibly powerful thing. Because what that does, what forgiveness does, is it, is it takes the hurt and gets rid of it. And you rest then with the love of God in the hole where the hurt was. If the person over here doesn't want anything to do with it, that becomes their issue. Right? But the power, the power of forgiveness can rest on you. Love your enemy. Love your enemies, Jesus says. There is, there is incredible power in that to be left with joy. I don't know if anybody here saw the movie or read the book, Amish Grace. Oh, I highly recommend it. <laughs> it is about a story that is true right in our backyard, really. A guy with a gun 
went to a schoolhouse, an Amish schoolhouse. And he used the gun. The Amish, in their horror, in their rage, in all of it, found the only way to survive and to move on and to find joy again was to forgive. And it's what they did. That's what this book is about. It was a process for them. And it can be for us too. But always through their process, they understood how important it was to receive forgiveness and to give. At one point, one of the mothers says, if I don't forgive, I will lose my God. Forgive your enemies. Love your enemies. The power of of forgiveness is huge. What we don't want to do is hang on to the hate that just eats us up. And we want to grab that forgiveness that God offers to us. Don't see this peace here as as, as an order from God. Love your enemy. Da, da, da. God's offering us a way to deal with life when it is grossly unfair. And to fill our hearts with love rather than being stuck with the hate. Love your enemies. There's power there. Great power. Amen.
we confess our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leadings of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy, console hearts that long for forgiveness, mend broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled especially Vic, Barbara, Elizabeth, and Matthew, John, Brian, Eric, Elizabeth, Steve, Marianne, Lisa, Ibby, Shirley, Diane, David, and Sue, Linda, Ruth, Robert, Waltrid, Jackie, Hattie, Doris, Sarah, Jake Morgan, and baby Joshua, Gretchen, and Charles, and those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. God of grace, we we praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom especially Spencer, Spence Nelson, and those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of, of the resurrection, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Mighty God, protect and bless all civil servants local government officials, and members of the armed services who work for our safety and security, especially Courtney, Matthew, Levi, Kyle, Todd, Anthony, Vince, Elizabeth, Derek, Christina, Rihanna, Dennis, Mark, and Joseph, God of grace. We pray for our congregation, and our pastor, the Reverend Thomas Neal, God of grace. Healing God, we pray for an end to the pandemic COVID-19. Encourage all to receive the vaccine you gave as a gift. Comfort those who have lost loved ones and send your healing spirit on those who are ill. Help us be thankful for those working in the front lines We name Cindy, Laura, Nick, David, Joe, Jim, Linda, Tom, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. 
Keep them safe in your protective care. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of your prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's love and peace one with another. Please stand as you're able and comfortable.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word you created all things. Through the prophets you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us in this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be
And now for those at the pews. The body of Christ given for you. blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for Please stand as you are able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the riches, strengthened by the riches of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen.
Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news.